right here, pup. What you missing me, huh? Oh, with long grass, too much for little puppies. Hmm? Was it too much for little puppies? You squeaked. The horses were there. And I'm moving them over here before I let them out. I think the storms and winds have left. So there's Hawthorne Beach, Hawthorne Hawthorne Larch, Horse Chestnut Larch. Down there are cherries, horse chestnut, more beach over there, beach here, horse chestnut, copper beach, silver birch. Oh, that's a lime tree, not the lime for citrus. It's a different kind of lime. There's another birch, surrounded by generations of tree plantings. And generations of puppies. Yes, you don't like the long grass. It's too much for tiny legs. So, I'll have to carry you. Oh, you're roasty hot. Yes. Why don't you stay with this old girl? She'll babysit you while I go to the long grass. Are you going to follow me or stay with uh, your auntie? Your big auntie and your mum. Anyway, I've got to keep doing this fencing, which the horses are going to graze. Lots of grass. Loads of grass. And no fertilizer except rotational grazing. Oh, you've abandoned your puppy that you're supposed to be babysitting. Everybody's abandoned the poor puppy. There's Inca making her way through. <laughs> Inca, what you doing? Waiting for your puppy. Oh, there he is. You good girl. Babysit your baby. Oh, he's got tangled in the electric fence. <laughs> oh, he's got untangled. Okay. Yeah. Clever pups. Yeah. Look at that. You found an oxide daisy. See, they're sewing themselves back in the field again. Clever pups. Clever pups. Okay, I've got to get back to work. Yes, I know. I know. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. You're no longer the baby of the family. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, pup. Yes. Okay, I'll pick you up. Oh, you're being stomped on by everybody else. Come on. Here we go. We're going to go fencing. I'm working on the fencing. And these two are hanging out in the shade. Magpie and bear. Some of these can be very tired. They've been following me all over the place. <laughs> How are you? I know, you've got mites in your ear. And we've got medicine and we're feeding your mites. No, we're killing your mites. I know, it's very annoying for dogs. Yes. Very annoying. Okay. Onwards. Keep doing the fencing. Oh, look, I've disturbed the peaceful friendship. Yuga boy bear. Whoop, there we go. Peaceful friendship is definitely turned into a game now. But Magpie remains watching what's going on. So, the girls think something's up. Got to pick you up. You ready?
And there they all are. They are gonna wolf food down. They've, they're weaned. And so they were drying off. And I also wormed them and kept them inside and they were on hay. So they're out here. This does have clover in it, but it's very covered in the orchard. They are gonna pounce on all the windfall apples, but there's so many of them. Hopefully nobody will get bloat. But they're gonna be in here now for the day or two or three so that I can keep checking on them for mastitis and drying off because they're a dairy breed. You have to be really careful about when they're drying off, they might come down with mastitis or something sometimes. So hopefully there's enough diversity in here. And look, they're just chowing down. They're loving the apples, the windfall apples. So their diet of hay is now over. Look at that. I'm chowing down on the cooking apples. Loving it. Oh, ladies, you are loving it. Okay. Next is the horses who are anticipating their trip up to the field. You guys are ready to go. Hot to trot. They're gonna gallop all the way around. I might stop for a bite. Hey, hey, Inca, leave it. The sheep are fine. You're on the wrong side of the fence anyway. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. Look at all the pollinating plants in there. And look, the Gilda Rose are gonna have berries the first year. These rowans won't for a little while longer, but it's looking good. Yarrow, evening primrose, oxide daisies. And Incas push them all the way out into the field. Look at this here. I've set this aside this year. It was where the winter grazing, bale grazing was. Look at the yarrows. Wonderful population of yarrows. We've had yarrows here forever. Well, no. One stage there was a ryegrass farmer who had cattle here. But we're back to having these in the field. Excellent for pollinators and excellent for livestock, for worming. Look at that. Hoverflies. Okay, I'm gonna put you down. No more galloping horses. Yeah. And close the gate. The horses are in the tall grass around the corner. First, close the gate. So this is regenerative farming at its best. The horses haven't been on this plot of ground for maybe two years. So they grow, graze it tight, but you can't see the soil where they've been grazing. If this was a ryegrass sward, if they strip graze this, you could see the soil. You cannot see the soil. You see that? Okay, I take it back. You can see soil in areas, but there's very little soil available to be naked in the sunlight. Then the other thing we have in here, okay, yes. There are thistles, but the horses will eat those and it's good for pollinators. And you move along through here and you have all kinds of different pollinators, like these little white fellas, the 
dandelion. Here's little kind of traditional for forget-me-nots. Then I love these. The and then there's you've got the uh, lawn daisy daisy. That's not the oxide daisy. That's a different kind of daisy. And let's see what else we have. There's an oxide daisy. Oh, here, look. You can see the difference. You just stay there for a minute. That's an oxide daisy, big, and that's one of the lawn daisies, or what I call lawn daisies. I'm sure they have something else, another name. Oh, and here's another oxide daisy here. Okay, I'll pick you up because the horses are all right there. Yeah, we don't want you squished by a horse. There is a member, that's a member of the canine family. Yes. There's a member of the dandelion family. Look at them, dandelion family all along this bank here. Oh, look at where she is. She's surrounded in the dandelion family. Isn't that right, pup? Look at that bank of pollinator friendly plants. Yes, this is a sheep farm, but this is farming for biodiversity and farming with nature and paddock grazing. So by tomorrow, this will be grazed down to the nub and clover will be coming up through it for the next section of fattening lambs and fattening ewes back into being um, ready to go in lamb again. Anyway. Oh, how are you? You're adorable. Yes. Look at all that grass to go forward on for the horses. They're only in this small square of a paddock. Glossy and shiny in their summer coats. Glad to be out again. Here you can see the cow parsley seeds. And here you can see they've been eaten. So the cow parsley is food for the pollinators in spring and seed for the birds. So you can see there's loads of them. Well, there's less than there were because the birds have been stripping them. Look, that's stripped clean. Over here, these some of these aren't fertile. You can see the ones that are paler and smaller. The fertile ones are the ones the birds want, which are those ones like that. Anyway, it looks like a scraggy mess with mustard, but this is full of bird food. This is what I love about cow parsley. Look at those beautiful black seeds. Bird food. It's also shrew food and mouse food and hedgehog food, and it's food for everybody. It does look scraggly though. And poor bear, all their seeds get stuck in his coat. So he has to get shaved in the summer. I still haven't gotten to this end of him, but the worst of it is over for him. He still gets, there you can see there's still seeds getting in there. Oh, you don't like those seeds. Okay, morning coffee now. I think we've done fencing and moving livestock for the morning. Sunday morning adventures. <laughs>